All right, guys, once again, we're back. Here's 3CM here. Mike and Pete and I are here. And this time we got Ryan Brown, who has been killing it lately with the covers. Um, he's uh, he's joining us from across the ocean. So it's uh, going be, gonna to be fun. We had the matchup time zones and everything like that. But um, super excited to have him. Uh, took a little bit to no, figure no. out the, over the holidays to finally get him to sign up. Uh, Ryan, you sure shared your first cover. I do have to say my first cover experience with you was this book here. I loved it from the second I saw it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, is it Kindred? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kindred, mm -hmm. the Amazing Spider-Man 24. So, yep. I loved that and the fact that it was a connecting cover of this. Yeah, um, yeah, that, that was a store exclusive for uh, Comics Elite. Um, yeah, it, it sort of connects, but it, it slightly vaguely connects. If you put them both together, you can see that. <laughs> like, I can't do it. I know you can. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can put, like, uh, his, his hood, is starting to rip and spider-man's fingers are coming through his hood the side of the hood mm -hmm. and you can see all the insects are starting to pile in the, you know like come up to spider-man's eye and it's cracked on like the insects like like whatever you call those feet are sort of <laughs> you know getting in there and stuff it's kind of it's one of those kind of i don't know insect horror type things you know i looked at yeah, a lot anything of, close to the eye yeah, yeah. I kind of I looked at a lot of those insects, those in, uh, centipedes and things, and and tried to get the kind of color schemes, and that's sort of translucent look, you know, where you can see all see through. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's legs and stuff, and you can see that the bones and the legs are slightly flexible. It's kind of that kind of horrible insecty thing, you know, <laughs> and all all the other ones all floating about the place. It's sort of. I like to like make a little story with stuff, you know. It's so you, you look around the thing and see more each time, you know, you look at it or whatever. I mean, like you have Spider Man dangling from his eye here and just and what I do love, like this Kindred came out issue one, but yeah, this is only the second cover as an exclusive. Mm. There was a one issue twenty two had a cover with this kindred character. Yeah. And then you took it to the next level. Like yeah. you this is the image where I'm like Kindred scares the hell out of me. <laughs> now it, the the final issue this, they just recently sort of revealed who he was. I'm like, oh, it's not as exciting as the what you made him out to be here. How did you yeah. still come up with that look, or not the look because the look was created before, but to yeah. make him as evil looking as you went? Well, it's kind of you've got almost all the elements there, you know, in the design. Um, so I, I basically looked at that and sort of thought to myself, well, you're going to have to. You know, it's insects, it's kind of, you know, like a body underneath a lot of wrappings. So you have to have all those wrappings really old and kind of grimy looking, you know. If the insects have been all climbing over everything, it's all kind of grimy and there's like browns and stuff in there. And you can see all those kind of, you know, all that all that wrapping around them. It's all kind of yeah, just texture's horrible. Great. It's dirty. Yeah. So, so what you do is you have the teeth all like yellowed and, and you can see on the front where his teeth, the enamel has worn off the front of his teeth. And you can see in, you know, the, the next layer of tooth, you know, it's kind of, it's all, every element you have to put in there is like, has to tell that story that this, this character is really grimy and kind of, you know, disturbing, you know, it's, and you can see the, the hollows here where it's basically almost wrapped around a skull instead of like a, you know, like a, a fully formed face sort yeah. of thing, you know, and and we, we had sort of arguments about whether we could get away with like on a Spider-Man cover having Spider-Man so small, you know, because there there's a lot of rules and things, you know, you kind of have to you have to sort of you know take into mm. consideration when you're doing a cover with a character like that, and if you're doing like Spider-Man being such a big character, you know, and you know making him such a little tiny figure, you know, but. I thought it was important, you know, you have to show kind of Tara and mm. this thing that where the kindred, you know, character is the most important here. And Spider-Man is like a little pitiful insect, you know, yeah. he's not important, you know, but you see that kind of like the flash of the, the Spidey sense sort of things happen there as well. And, you know, it's, it's it almost looks like an eyeball, you know, so his face or his head looks like his, his eye, you know. Yeah. Um, so, what? How big was this originally? Like, as a piece? So, was this a painted piece, a digital piece? Yeah. Like, oh, it was painted. Um, it was. Do you, you? You don't really have a three sizes and stuff. You know, like a four and a three over in mm -hmm. the US. No. Um, it's kind of. Um, 
So wait, is A3 is like long, it's longer, right? Longer yeah. and thinner. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, a, do you know, like an A4 page? Mm -hmm. you know, A4 size. Mm -hmm. It's like two of those put together, you know, okay. that sort of size. I work that size because um, it's faster. You can get the right amount of detail into it. Um, any bigger and you're putting an awful lot of paint on and you know you can render easier when things are larger but you know i kind of find that size works best if you work on a on like a cover that's that's almost comic book size you know you just can't get all those details when you shrink that that image down you know there's so much detail in it you know it it kind of it translates it's very hard to paint somebody like spider-man that size actually yeah. the size of a comic you know it's it's hard like so yeah M most of my covers and things would be painted that size so. okay oh. so we got to go to your first cover well and just so everyone knows this well let, let me get rid of this one this is not ryan brown that we're talking to <laughs> this is a different ryan brown this is not the one ryan brown this is a different one we're not talking to this ryan brown i talked about this him. is the ryan brown we're talking <laughs> so notice the difference <laughs> you can tell ryan yeah. brown's style from the get-go from his is this your first cover yeah that, that's actually the very first cover um i think it's probably a date on it somewhere um i think it's probably about six five six years ago um okay. IDW asked me, did a, I was doing a bit of coloring at the time, and they said, would you want to do like a cover or whatever? And I thought, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they gave me a run of uh, covers for the V Wars. At that point, I wasn't really um, drawing or painting anything at all. Like I, I used to draw when I was a kid and stuff, but whenever I went to art college, basically that sort of uh, put me off drawing and painting. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I didn't do anything for, for years, um, except for a little, a bit of color and stuff. And at that point I couldn't, I couldn't say no to the fact that like, you know, they had offered me covers to do. So I, I said, yes, even though I didn't know, you know, whether I could do them or not, this was digitally <laughs> painted, you know, I, I had to, like, uh, I got my wife to like take photographs of me, you know, in these poses and stuff, you know, oh, and, wow. um, now this, I wonder really now I definitely see it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like me. <laughs> <laughs> so now I need a signed version of this cover because you're the model and you're the artist. I mean, you can't go wrong there. <laughs> I'm trying to turn my head to see him. Angle. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's awesome. So you did like you said you did several of these covers for V Wars, which did you then go? Then it became a TV show. Did you go? Hey, I helped just come up with that idea for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they used anything with with my designs and stuff on it, but um. It, you know, I was just happy to, to do the covers at the time. You know, it was kind of, it was terrifying and, you know, enjoyable sort of at the same time. Mm. You know, I'm one of those people that kind of, um, I want everything to be right, you know, and I hate to produce a piece of art and have it out there and people look at it and it's it's sort of not my full amount of, you know, energy put into it and effort. You know, if I do yeah, something But how do you do that in deadlines? You can't be a perfectionist and meet deadlines. Uh, I, mean, I haven't yeah. met all can be both. <laughs> well, I, I sort of, yeah, I kind of, I limit myself to the amount of covers I would take on. At the minute, okay. I only really take on one cover a week, you know, okay. so, you know, so four covers a month. Um, and I kind of find that's, that's best for me. Other mm -hmm. people can take on a lot more, you know. I, I've also this opinion where you can kind of saturate the market with your artwork, you know, and kind of, turn people off a bit you know yeah. so we've seen that kinda, a lot lately yeah um there's some people that can throw covers out like i don't know three a week two a week or whatever and it's not for me you know it's, yeah. i, I want to produce art i want to produce something that has um in my opinion has a bit of something substance to it or whatever and um has a bit of a story and a bit of a feeling to it as well you know yeah, that extra uh, effort shows and, and limiting yourself it definitely comes through yeah. yeah, I mean, well, that's good. We that's can, good. For, yeah, I mean, just talking about those kindred, the ones that we looked at, like mm -hmm. the amount of detail you put into the small things. I mean, yeah. you can tell yeah. versus a quickly slapped together one um, that yeah. that other artists have done. Or yeah. when I we're about to look at several different ones of your covers, mm -hmm. no two really. I mean, you have a style, but no two mm -hmm. really look alike. 
which yeah. which I love yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. when I look at. But so like early on, you said you're in IDW. You did do turtles, just yeah, not the yeah. turtle we looked at. Just not the other one. <laughs> Slightly yep, different. That's right. Yep. Uh, well, I did. I, I don't know. Maybe six covers or something like that for IDW. Um, I did one with uh, Kevin Eastman. Well, no, two with Kevin Eastman. Um, and one one was drawn by Kevin Eastman, uh, inked by Simon Bisley, and then I digitally painted over it. Um, oh, nice. And the, the other ones were all mine, I think. Um, so, yeah, it was good, good fun. You know, I kind of, I've got this thing where it's like, you know, supermarket sweep, you know, I, I kind of want to go in and get this character and draw him and then go on over to this one and draw that character. And, you know, want to draw Spider-Man, I want to draw Superman, I want to draw Batman, Mars Attacks and you know, so aliens. You don't want to get labeled and, just the no, Spider-Man no. guy or just, you'd rather have no. them all. Yeah, uh -huh. I think I would get bored, you know, yeah. I think if it was drawn yeah, the same draw. character over and over and over again, I would get really bored. And I kind of like moving from thing to thing. It keeps it fresh, you know, and mm -hmm. the thing about it, the good thing about working with like at the moment, Marvel and DC, it's, you know, they have so many characters and I don't mind doing some of the obscure ones as well. You know, it's, it's kind of fun going and taking one of those sort of old, obscure old characters and kind of trying to make them look believable sort of, you know, and well, with your with your with your multi texture sort of yeah. style too, mm -hmm. it allows you to experiment with some new styles on a new character. So, like for instance, this character, right, with fur, essentially, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. could do something on this character that you couldn't yeah. do on Spider Man, who's supposed to yeah. be sleek and you know yes. smooth yeah. Yeah. kind of thing. Totally. So. Yeah, and and the thing yeah, about fun. this is, you know, there's there's a there's a balance between photorealistic and believability. You know, you know, if I, I, in my opinion, if you go too much like our photorealistic, it can be become boring. You know, yeah. if, if you're taking like a, like a photograph of somebody and just recreating that photograph, it, yeah. you know, people, it switches people off. My yeah. idea is believability is what you're trying to get to, you know, that kind of where something looks like it is there. It could all, it all almost look like a model of something, you know, and, you know, so with that, when you look at that, it's like it's just lines and scratches and stuff. When you zoom into the face and stuff, it's it's really there's not a lot of detail there, but it's all this um, implied detail. You know, mm -hmm. so the light is hitting in a certain manner, and it gives this sort of impression that there is a lot of detail there, but there really isn't. You know, yeah. and that's kind of the way I want to want to do things. I don't want things to be too polished looking, or else you know it's that that mess kind of adds you know it makes mm -hmm. it makes a person's eye move around the image you yeah know, it's important well you like know. that takes things back to the when the first early lcd and plasma screens came out people yeah. were turned off because it was too real like people didn't yeah. want to see the, <laughs> the acne on the actor's face that they were trying to cover exactly. with the makeup like, yeah. i think back yeah. to my parents yeah. getting one it drove me nuts the, it was too much on certain stations. You go to PBS and it was like, what yeah. the? No, stop. Give me back that shiny. Yeah. You love that blurriness, don't you? You want that kind of feel and the sort of slowness and blurry. It's kind of, it has it's a cinematic look or something, isn't it? It all yeah. blends, it blurs together. And I yeah. find that whenever my stuff is print, put into print, it actually kind of, it looks better, I think. You know, in my opinion, it looks better because it sort of all unifies slightly. It kind of that that print blur, you know, adds something to it. You know, it's interesting to see. You know, so yeah, yeah that's Morbius. I kind of I did a couple of uh, Morbius covers. I was supposed to do the whole run, but mm. um, I had so much work on at the time, I, I actually couldn't do the last ones, which was unfortunate. Mm. But. Which. What was your first, like the Spider-Man one was an exclusive. It was a store exclusive. When was your first cover that you did that was a Marvel request? Was that the wolf, the wolf werewolf one that I just showed, or was there one before that? I, there, there was, um, I think I did Doctor Doom. Do you know one of those Immortal? Ooh. Oh, you did um, one of the Immortal, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mortal Immortal variant or something. Yes, I do. Oh, I, yeah, um, that's great. I yeah. did I did a Doctor Doom one. Um I did an Earth X Doctor Doom for Marvel. Oh, I did, wow, I did yes. so many. I don't know. I mean, the first year <laughs> I worked for Marvel, I did something like forty-five covers or something. Um, yeah. You know, and I, 
and there was a good few of them that were that were direct. I think that was for model as well. That was maybe this was my the, first one. The carnagized or ones. So mm-hmm. that, yeah, this mm-hmm. might have been one of the probably your first yeah. ones. Yeah. And the, it's, I, what I love about the Morbius that was when you fought, when you first got a cover that was the cover A. Or yeah. would, like yeah. most of them were these yeah. cover, okay, That's we're right. doing Carnage, right. or we're doing Immortalized, or we're doing whatever eyes ones they were yeah. doing at yeah. the time. <laughs> and you got yeah. one of them from a character. So, like, yeah. I remember seeing them and going, That's awesome. Yeah. But it's yeah. the, I mean, we're, we're speculators. We like to think, know, okay, no. so it's a little bit different for us because we're like, okay, is this cover? I love this cover. I bought it because I like it. And then yes. I bought it because it's going to be worth something later on. Those are That's two different right. things. Uh, right. but this is one yeah. that actually people liked for both reasons because it mm-hmm. it was a popular cover because some of these were yeah. just terrible, but people did like it. It's Black Panther. It's <laughs> kind of um, – so I did like this. Here's another exclusive that I loved. Um, everyone loved the homage that you did. Oh, this one? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Was another the Lethal Protectors. I think. Absolute yeah. Carnage. Uh, yeah, I do, I do a lot of work with Comics Elite. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of variants and stuff, Marvel and DC, basically. Um but yeah, we kind of, I work with Sean and, you know, sometimes we sort of bounce around ideas or whatever. Yeah, this was one of his ideas. He said, you know, can we do like a homage to, I think it was a Punish, Punisher cover, wasn't it? It was, was yes. Thing? It was like yeah. Punisher 6 or 7. It's yeah. a, like one of the few covers oh, that's that people right. that's what really like from that series. Yeah. So yeah. The, the lighting like, is incredible. Yeah. It's, um, it's it's sort of simple, you know. It's like I mean, when you're doing a lot of those kind of enemy kind of things, it's all veins, but it's all about how you kind of do those veins. You could just draw lines, but mm-hmm. how you have reflections hitting when you zoom in on that face, you can see little reflections and little touches of white. It's mm-hmm. it's very simple, actually. You know, it's kind of it seems more complicated <laughs> than you would imagine, but it's not. It's 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 very simple. When you says when you the master the artist, <laughs> says the master artist to all the dudes who talk about comic books. It's really simple. You just take your paint out. And you just you just paint it. What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah. Well, the th- the thing about it is, I find painting a lot easier than line art. You know, I'm not a line artist, so mm-hmm. um, my sketches aren't as good as my my paintings. You know, so I'm sure you they're know, terrible. <laughs> yes. uh, I kind of um, just send those all. I, just send those all to me. Send those all to Nashville. Right, okay, all right. Just, so it's yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah. So uh, they're just garbage. <laughs> they're all just piled up here, you know, in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I always admire like people that you know, line artists and stuff. You know, if, I think it's always like the other what you, the uh, the type of art you don't do. You know, you always admire that. And, you know, people always say, oh, they do line art, but they always wanted to do paint and stuff. Yeah. But I, I sort of, I, my career started with color, you know, so I'm kind of, I just plop color straight down and, you know, uh, sometimes people go for like black and white to start off with and then kind of, you know, add yeah. color afterwards. But I, I just go wallop and shove mm-hmm. it straight down to begin because I think it's a major part of the image, you know, it's, you know, getting those contrasts of like warms and cools and stuff, you know, it's, well, it's very important. It's you know. Looking at this and looking mm-hmm. at this, like when yeah. you talk, now that you say color, it makes mm-hmm. me go, okay, I can see how you think the blacks and the whites were the maybe not the last things, but the later yeah. things you added to, okay, I think red, I can see you working from a, not a blob, but you know, working yeah. the outline yeah. first yeah. and then just keep yeah. adding until you build out. That's it. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And this is, I love this cover too. It's about uh, whenever you have to add a bit of, well, when, when you're working with paper or a screen or anything, you're working on a two dimensional, you know, sort of medium, you know, so you have to, you have to break that barrier of two dimensions and kind of make something believable that is, it is three dimensions. And uh, one of the ways you do is layering. So, you know, foreground, middle ground, background, so her hand, you know, and her hand, you know, being on that door, pushing that door you know, forwards, it kind of, it's like that's in front of, you know, her shoulder. So it shows that that's, it's in front, you know, and, and you use the layering sort of techniques to kind of mm-hmm. make something, you look at more three dimensional, you know, and also yeah. give it a bit of depth to it, you know. But if you notice the angles of the door don't line up with the angle of the 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 wall at the back, you know, the kind mm-hmm. of doorway. And 
I do all this for on purpose because I want to make things look wonky and you know kind of make people look at things a second time you know yeah um and when things are too symmetrical or when things are too straight and too you know organized then it switches you know people off yeah. if yeah, you look at it, it in, they don't look at what you did they yes yeah they see yeah. what they assume they should yes do. yes yes and you want people to look or to go back to that image and keep looking at it and see more things each time and Mm. and all that sort of stuff so you can see the top of her head the light is hitting here but it's black at the back because the top of the the doorway is actually casting a shadow on her head so it's telling you that there's something above her head you know and the other thing is that kind of down like you know hitting her nose and you know casting shadows real real deep shadows and stuff again it's a very simple kind of trick to to um make you believe that that person is three-dimensional you know yeah it's it, you, it gives drama you know and when you've you got work, something oh sorry yeah oh no i was do you work thinking through where the trade dress is going to be because like this is the virgin yep. cover yep. like do you have to because i so we've seen art where it's been amazing and then been ugly the second trade dress has been dropped on it yeah, like, <laughs> of course, yeah. Big title, like right on the top of her head, so you don't yes. see that shadow. Yeah. This is yeah. Yeah. one of the deceased yeah. issues, if I recall. So. That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. I do, I do. Um, I would have like I would do a lot of my roughs on Photoshop, so I can kind of put a lot of color into it and things. And, and I would have like a tree address sort of laid out on the top, really just a big block, a score or a rectangle in the top mm -hmm. and i know none of the major information has to go in there you know but it depends whether i mean sometimes they do tree address and sometimes the the variant or a virgin variant you know as well with that same image mm -hmm. and i'll not worry an awful lot because the tree address kind of when you get the version you're kind of getting the full image in a sense so that way you know you're like so people pay get the exclusive version because yeah, yeah. that's the one i actually drew this for i didn't because like yeah. the only place yeah. on here is in the corner down in yeah. the bottom left corner is where like okay because dc does that for their b covers they yeah, only have that do. small little trade dress in the corner yeah yeah what i like although sometimes the their print good you know their print quality is good and they do that yeah. like card stock you know covers oh, and yeah. stuff which is really nice most of the well, stuff especially for a painter oh yeah a lot yeah, of your no, detail comes out much much nicer on that glossy finish oh, it does yeah i mean <laughs> there's nothing worse than getting a really bad print qual or print job you know on your covers yeah. you've spent a lot of time putting a lot of detail in it and it, it just doesn't come out or it comes out really dark you know because a lot of the times i want to put dark colors into things and stuff and, and if if it just bleaches like where all the all the details gone and yeah you know it's it's a waste of time really isn't it you know but yeah DC i think that happens well, with artists that work know? really big too when they're when they're working <laughs> shrunken down yep. to the appropriate size it loses all kinds yep. of detail and it just doesn't work you, yeah you have to know um how much detail is going to disappear you have to know also that if i go in and start detailing like really fine detail in certain parts of her costume or whatever that you're just not going to see it and you have to say to yourself right i'm in a race against time here where do i put the detail you know where do you put that that effort you know i have to fire all that effort into a certain spot and then spread you know, spread out from that point you know it's like you see a lot of details in certain spots there and then the background's very simple you know it's like and you also want to contrast little textures in the background that are not in this in the the figure in the front you know um it helps tell a story you know the background like there's nothing there you other artists like line artists and stuff would uh <clears throat> draw figures and draw you know buildings in the background and blah blah and whatever but what i'm trying to do is put a focus on those characters and, you know so that in reality when you would look at that individual your focus is totally on them and all the other background stuff is slightly blurred and it doesn't really matter you know to the story sort of thing so that's that's sort of the thinking behind it you know I, if the more detail you have in the background she will blur into it she'll disappear yeah. into it you know and I don't really want that to happen, you know. Okay, I just noticed looking at this cover more detail. 
you have her freaking is that she just beat the hell out of Wonder Woman? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I did, I, I've never noticed that before because because Cheetah is a phenomenal. But dang, the detail you, you put in on her. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to have to zoom in on this. I'm just looking like, wow, you grew. I mean, painted Wonder Woman there. I'm like, damn. She, I'm like, I want to see the rest of her head. She's left at her like that, and she, you know, she's down like this sort of thing. And I did I also did a cover for the Hulk, uh, the Immortal Hulk, and um, the Abomination was you. Know, oh yeah, beating beating the crap out of the Hulk, and uh, he was like laying on the ground, and I, I had him smashing his the Abomination was smashing the Hulk's head off the ground, you know, and. In my original design, the Hulk's head was not there. It was literally smashed into the concrete. You know? <laughs> but they said, "Look, can we can we show his face a bit here?" And I, was, <laughs> you know, because I thought that was more dramatic. You know, it's like arms and legs and everything up, but his head was literally yeah. smashed. Yeah. So I had to change. To, there's his face now. You know, you can sort of see his face. But the other thing as well is I made his, the abomination's fist, the, the right fist, gigantic. Oh, yeah. Because again, it, it's it's again telling the story, isn't it? It's like he's just uh, pounding him into the ground, you know. All the bits of concrete are flying into the air. The back, you know, you can see everything's exploding into the air where he's been smashed into the ground. You know, it's those are the kinds of things know. that make comics fun too. Like the, a lot of that, yeah. like you said, the photorealism takes mm -hmm. a lot of the fun and some yep. of the imagination out of yep. comics. Yep. And you're right, it gets a little boring. Whereas that, I mean, his fist isn't that big, but 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 his fist is that big. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like metaphor metaphorically speaking, yeah. his fist is that big. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So it's, it's believable, you know what I mean? You can sort of look at that and you say, okay, I could make a statue out of that. Or you can, you know, not too much um, sort of a squint and you would say they actually live in a, the real world in a sense, you know? Yeah. Uh, but they also have a connection to comics where the anatomy is a bit crazy and, you know, it's just not, it, it is fun, you know, that is what it is. That's the Hulk and well, the abomination is a mess. He's like something crazy. And why should he be all symmetrical? You know, one arm's the same size as the other arm. He, you know, he's, he's just a mess. So, you know, <laughs> you, you can draw, out, draw him whatever way you want, really, in a sense, can't you, you know? You got yep. Hulk's legs back there, they're blurred out. That you're like, yep. oh, that purple and green splash in the back that's the that's Hulk's right. legs. Back there. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How big is the Hulk <laughs> abomination destroying? Like, yes, until yeah, you yeah. told me all the blurry out stuff, I'm like, oh, that's not just background colors thrown back there. You actually yeah, yeah, do have yeah. a purple behind that. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, the more you look around, <laughs> you know, you see the little bits and pieces. And the Hulk's foot, you can't really see it because it's behind you know, the word the Hulk. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, it's all about telling it a little story, isn't it? It's you know, a bit of fun. I so, love, I love drawing stuff like that, the Hulk and Wolverine and all that. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so much. Like, what? How could you not enjoy like drawing like Marvel and DC characters? Just so many brilliant yeah. characters. But now, but now I gotta ask you though, because you're from across the ocean, mm -hmm. did you did you get excited about doing Judge Dredd? Oh, Judge Dredd, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was another character I wanted to draw, you know, and um, I actually did maybe about, I think I did eight samples of like cover samples before they would actually give me a cover. And, uh, you know, it was kind of, it was all, it's almost deflating sometimes, you know, you kind of do one <laughs> cover and you, no. you send it to them and they go, really nice cover. And then nothing happens, and then you do another one. It's like, oh, that's nice as well, you know. And it's only a couple of words, you know, very nice. And you kind of think, to yourself, oh my god, am I ever going to get it? You know, yeah. do, get any jobs? Tell me what yeah. I know. I just worked but, on this thing for three months. What do you mean, very nice? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> but that's that's yeah, the way what it I is. Did. You know, that is what this this kind of this industry and the career you've chosen you know it's kind of the the joy is almost in creating the stuff yourself and and if you can make a career out of it then you're fine you know it's mm -hmm. you know i do i i just get lost in creating the art a lot of the time you know and it, mm -hmm. it doesn't the deadlines are stressful you know and also would say that you know producing every single cover is stressful as well it's very hard I don't think there's ever but a cover I've said, you know, oh, that was easy to do. Um, 
Mm-hmm. It is almost like a little piece of your soul is put into every single cover, you know, and it, and you're stressed out. But it's like if you're running marathon, you know, it's painful, isn't it? And you know, bodybuilding is painful, and exercise is painful, and anything that's you know worthwhile, you know, there's a bit of pain involved a lot of the time. So. You know, I'm not one of those people that produces art and says, well, that was very simple. Now let's uh, relax and have a cocktail or something. You know, it's, it's like usually afterwards, it's like the sweat's like pouring down my head. It's like, yeah, because oh, for that cover, it's, that's it. This is all that disaster. matters. Yeah, yeah, of course. That because one. people are going to judge you on it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like yeah. they, they don't see how much you were paid. They don't see how long it took you. They're just going to say, was that a good cover or mm-hmm. was it not? You know, they're going to go, well, that's not as good as his other ones, you know, and you don't really want that. You know, yeah. So you said that, like, you had to take, okay, send in six different designs and something for, like, a, these Judge Dreads maybe. Have you gotten to the point now where you can go to, if Marble says, hey, we want a uh Gwenham and Carnage cover and you go here mm-hmm. and you throw it you say here's my idea and they go yes like have you gotten to the point where they now trust your instincts yes um <clears throat> it depends on the editors you're working with if you've got a bit of a relationship with an editor then they know you know that with the back and forward emails they know you know what you're going to produce you mm-hmm. they know that you're safe you're not going to produce something really crazy or you know that's that's not you know suitable for a kid's sort of comic or whatever and you know Wait, not suitable you, for kids uh, i'm yeah. not sure about this cover here being <laughs> suitable for kids <laughs> or well, this one here my, i'm picturing my child screaming at just, night your version of the batman yeah. wow. wait aren't those the same character Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or is that the mouth of Sauron? Oh, no. oh yeah. Well, <laughs> could be, could be. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, it's like I try my best to make uh, covers quite creepy and scary, you know, because that's my thing. I love horror. Um, mm-hmm. I once was at a convention in the UK and Uh, A small boy, maybe about eight or nine year old, came along to my table and was looking at all the prints that were sitting on the table and saw like some of the horror stuff. And he sort of looked at it and his face started kind of going like this. And he started, (laughs) he started crying and ran. And I I turned around (laughs) to the person that was working with me and I was like, Yes! (laughs) Yes! <laughs> yes. <You're accomplished. laughs> it's like, I, I believe if you're producing the horror stuff and you haven't made a small boy cry, you know, then, <laughs> you know, it's, you're not doing the job, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's a bit, you know what it is? It's like, it's like a kid going on a roller coaster or it's a kid, you know, watching a horror film or something like that you know what i mean it's not it's no long-term damage you know point and uh it's, well, it's kind of it's a bit fun isn't it it's, don't you kind of yeah. want to have it to be a little like that one ah, thing just that a sticks weird. in their head until they're adult like i still don't like clowns or, or whatever because of that one image yeah, or have this image stick want, in your head you i don't more want to admit that you know what i mean but you know, cause, uh, <laughs> i don't want people suing me and stuff you know so. <laughs> But, uh, but you, you can do a sexy girl cover because that's what sells. Every collector goes crazy for sexy girl, girl covers. Yeah. What is yeah. what book, which black cat is this? Is this the new run or is this the one right before? Um, I think it's a new uh, one. Yeah. I mean, I only did that maybe was it last year at the end of last year? I think it was. Yeah. So I think uh, I so it was year. probably because issue one just came out of Black Cat. Maybe today. Mm. Two two drops two drops today. Yeah, so it came tomorrow, out a month ago. So that probably is Scott issue one then. Yeah. 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 And so, that's my just... cat. That's my cat. Um, you know, on the bottom left there. Um, my cat's called Simon. Um, <laughs> and uh, I had to put, uh, and she's a girl, and she's called Simon, which is even weirder. But uh, <laughs> but um, I had to put her as a ginger, but I had to change her. You know, uh, Marvel said, no, kind of a ginger cat it has to be white or black. So. Um, um. But uh, yeah, so I had to get my cat in there. So, <laughs> but like, yeah, you know, you're, you're, I have to cover so much more because your cat is in the picture. My <laughs> cat, no. <laughs> Do you know the thing about it? It's a challenge again, isn't it? It's like, can you draw a figure 
uh, you know, a female figure where you know, she looks kind of powerful, attractive and, you know, and stuff like that. Or can you draw horror where it's scary and stuff? Can you draw like a superhero who is very kind of, you know, heroic looking, you know, it's like I've did like Gwen Stacy covers and stuff. And I've, I've did like lots and lots of stuff. Basically, I've did GoBots covers for IDW, you know, and Gears <laughs> of War and absolutely everything. Mars Attacks and so comedy stuff as well. I kind of, I see them all as challenges. It's just, you know, what are you trying to put, uh, put across? What are you trying to portray for that particular cover? You know, and what I want is her looking kind of, you know, sexy, but powerful as well, you know, and, and it's all in the eyes and the expression and the pose, and you know, very powerful pose and kind of climbing out of this window sort of thing, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's just techniques, you know, again, um, all you do is you kind of take boxes, you kind of say, right, well, dramatic light um interesting pose you know asymmetry mm. you know as they say and like uh, you know art contrapasto where you're kind of changing the angles of the hips and the you know the shoulders you're trying to make things so that they don't look like an action figure so that the figure's shoulders and hips are all straight mm. on the thing and you also try and break that wall of two dimensions as well so things are hey, subtly coming out at you. you know? At least she didn't try to turn her hips and her breasts so they could get the ass shot and the breast shot. <laughs> yeah, time. yeah. That, that was what the <laughs> 90s were full of. Those those girls that you could like. It was like you twisted yes. the Barbie doll in half. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. It's very common, hey, very popular in sort of give like me the done. 90s and stuff. But look, you know, I mean, it's I I I don't knock anybody's stuff. You know, it's people have certain ways of doing things and styles and and you know, it's all art and it's all kind of. It's all as relative as anybody else's, you know, and mm. you can say mine is too over uh, rendered, you know, it's too polished and, you know, there's like, I can pick holes in mine and people could pick holes in the anatomy because it's not perfect at all, you know, and um, like, I'm, I'm still learning totally, you know, I've, I've got so much to learn and you know anybody that that produces art you know usually says the same thing it's like a, it's a journey it's rather than a destination it is a journey that you never ever get to that point you know well millions have, of girls have played with barbie for for yeah. 70 years and she would break in half if she were real so <laughs> yes, that's right, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. speaking of barbie there's Gwen Stacy. There's, yeah, Gwen Stacy. close enough yeah i like that over the shoulder <laughs> the that's angle cool. pick for this yeah yeah it's kind of and, and all the foreshort, uh, all the foreshortening on the cord too. That's hard. Oh, that's hard yeah. To do. I mean, it's trying to work all that stuff out of the night. Mm -hmm. it's kind of, <laughs> do you work it's, on it's, photos or models? Or? I do some of it, some of it. I do, but you know, uh, not all of it. You know, certain things because you want certain lighting to be right because whenever lighting on a face is wrong, it's really wrong. And, yeah. You know, you have. I so I wouldn't copy. Uh, reference photograph like to perfection you know what i mean i would only mm -hmm. i would kind of use it as a bit of inspiration for something you know but um sometimes you get things really wrong you know when you don't realize you're getting it wrong and it's only yeah. until you kind of leave it for a couple of days and come back to it and look at that image and you go oh my god how did i draw that you know it's like one <laughs> eye here somewhere and stuff and it's you, you don't realize you know, you've done it why did i send that to my editor no <laughs> i know i know i have done that before but but uh, editors, you know, editors sometimes pick you up on it and they say, you know, um, his arm is a bit strange, you know, and it's like, and I I kind of fight it and I go, oh, no, I don't believe that. I think it's totally fine and it looks, I'm and then I leave it right. And, yeah, I love complaining as well, you know, I love to complain and I love to, I just hate people telling me that I've did something wrong. And then I look at it and go, yes, they're right. They're right. It is wrong, you know. And, and, and once you see geez. once you see that stuff, you can't unsee it either. Like oh, there's a God, there's one artist no. who who draws every left eye too close yeah. to the nose and up higher. Oh, maybe God. you know maybe you know who I'm talking about. I don't know. <laughs> 
but every single, especially on females, and it's every yeah. single time, and I can't not see it every time I see this well, artist. Don't work. tell me because I'm not sure. Yeah, don't don't ruin them for whoever that artist is. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to go look through all of my covers because of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, uh, yeah. I mean, Neil Adams hates that, hates hates that Superman cover, the Breaking the Chains cover. Oh yeah. Because oh, if you look at the leg that's forward. Uh -huh. If that were in proportion, it would be like three times the size of his other leg. Oh, God. Yeah. But again, it's like yeah. the fist. It's like the abomination fist, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's it, yeah. it tells a story, but yeah, he can't yeah, yeah. stand it. Of course. He can't stand it. Look, it's hard. Yeah, it, it's, it's very hard to look at your own stuff. It's very hard. Yeah. To, I mean, I... And I say it, I've got this on my wall. You know what I mean? But it's like I, 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 I can't use the the phrase now. You know, I would never put any of my artwork on the wall. You know, it's, it's right back. <laughs> but um, it's this is only for podcasts. You know what I mean? It's like I would never put any. Sure, of my artwork this is on actually the, wall. the wrap around your bedroom. Um, <laughs> you sleep with staring at her Every on the wall. Room, yeah. <laughs> this is this is my bedspread. You know, I go to sleep with it. <laughs> <laughs> at our towels and, you know, in, the, in the bathroom and stuff all this. Who is it? it's Natalie Sanders does that she sells her art prints you can, oh, you really? can have it on a big comforter like oh, what crazy. like uh, x23 is the one I've seen her sell I'm like what really you, can, you can get a print of the on her bed sheet I love it I would love a James Brown robe you know there's a robe <laughs> I can go to conventions with it over and stuff you know? <laughs> I go in. I could go in all tired, and then somebody could put the robe around me. You know, with all the comics, and then I go away, and then come back in again. You know, do it all <laughs> Oh my gosh! Please, please go be in my college and just walk up there with your robe and say, "I finally made it to the panel." And just take <laughs> off just every one of your covers. <laughs> oh yes, I need to. I need to now. Somebody's gonna make. Somebody is actually gonna make bed spreads of some of my horror stuff. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be quilts. Yeah, the 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 me about making quilts, and I thought, look, you can't say no to that, can you? You know, you just no. can't say no. So, so they're making horror stuff of you know quilts with my horror art on it. So, yeah, if you keep an eye on my face, you'll you'll see the results. I can't wait. <laughs> so, switching gears slightly because you changed the color palette for this cover. All of a sudden, oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, I mean, was this painful <laughs> to use pink and purple? No, like, no, no, pink is brilliant. Pink is a brilliant color, absolutely brilliant. It's so powerful, you know. Um, mm. And when you put it on against like cool colors and stuff, it is like powerful. And look at the blue up in that dragon, right? Yeah. You put look at some of that purple up there beside the blue. You know, and then you've got pink beside that. It's like, look at those colors, how the the pop out. You know, um, it's inspired by all the other kind of, uh, you know, Gwen Stacy kind of or Spider yeah, Gwen kind of covers. It, I remember R seeing Renzi, or is it the, who does the colors? Uh, Rico. Rico Renzi. Yeah, I, th I think that, he does yeah, some the coloring. Yeah, yeah. Le you know, the colors fantastic. You know, absolutely lovely pink sort of colors and stuff in there and. You know, it's just so powerful. Pink, you know, pink's a brilliant color. Pink and blue, you can put those in there. And the, you, what you're always doing is like if you look at a color palette or a color wheel, mm -hmm. you go you go with the two colors opposite each other. You know the um they, and they're they're contrasting or complementary colors. Um, mm -hmm. And you've got that that red or that sort of pink and that sort of blue are great together. You know, you can, you can use a green with that, like a turquoise green with that pink. Mm. And they're really powerful as well. But, you know, certain colors really, really pop you know, when you stick them together. You know, that was the plan with that one, like a dynamic pose in the center. And then you see his wing off to the bottom left. It's kind yeah. of, it, it looks Brand like it's closer to us, you know. And mm. again, it's giving you that depth, you know. And again, her anatomy is just, it's that's not real, you know, it's just, yeah. it's impossible. You know, you can't, it's sort of, it's, but it's just, it's like, <clears throat> you know, um, you look at the original comic art and stuff, you know, look at the Kirby stuff, you know, it, the, the anatomy was not, you know, full realistic anatomy, but it was telling a story. You know, he would draw a fist, draw a fist and then put a body on the end of that fist 
because yeah. you're drawing the most <laughs> important thing first. You know what I mean? It's it's mm -hmm. what you're trying to portray that that thing or that line of action. You know, the line of action first draw that and then put everything onto that and don't worry too much you know whether the anatomy is 100 percent or not you know <clears throat> i worked a lot with like simon bisley and you, know, you probably know i love this ever everybody yeah like bisley stuff is just fantastic you know and um <clears throat> the thing about it is he always says you know it's it's about power it's the, about the line of action it's about that the power of those lines you know and and everything in that image telling the story you know nothing's in that image for uh, for the sake of being in that image it's all pointing towards that story you know? mm. and that's that's how yeah, because he's he does the same thing along those same lines we're exaggerating certain things to draw attention to them um, I'm that's that's thinking it. of like a couple of Swamp Thing covers that he did. There's a mm -hmm. couple of those heavy metal covers that he did. Like, um, you're just talking about the butt covers that he did. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, of course yeah. I am. I mean, yeah. that's one yeah. of my favorite covers of all time. It's one, <laughs> I don't remember what heavy metal number something or other would yeah. find it. Uh, <laughs> but but no, but I mean, even like yeah. the veins and and the and, well, I guess it's the vines in in the in the Swamp Thing stuff. It's so yeah. like, yeah. It's, I mean, you could touch it. You feel like if you touch the cover. That texture is yeah. there, and that's yeah. important. I mean, it tells the character's story. I've known Simon for years, and he is one of the best, one of the best artists, you know. And his skill is so fast as well. Thank God. is like his sketching and stuff is just, it's superhuman. You know what I mean? He, <laughs> he's just, it's scurry. It's scurry how good he is. You know, there, there are few people that you can watch or you can see drawn and you say oh my god that's just you just don't want to draw anymore you know it's, <laughs> I it's just so good yeah <laughs> oh yeah yeah it's scary um i looked at his stuff originally I, um you've probably seen seen judgment in gotham you know the the batman judge dread comic yeah oh, yeah. i saw that and I saw the pin and that and i thought what is this you know why did somebody do that and I tried to pick it apart then over years, you know, and it's strange things like colors put on top of colors, like like you can have um, like warm kind of uh, uh, browns and then you put a blue on top of it and some of that leaches through and those colors right beside each other, it's like putting red beside green, you know, it dazzles your eye. And you're, for years, I thought to myself, what color is that high? Is he getting that color? It's just, you know, but it's it's the relationship of colors beside colors or on top of colors, you know, that that tricks your eye. You know, it makes something absolutely mm. magical. You and know, and, and he he's just gets this way of doing things, you know. And that's something that when you paint it, you actually get that experience. Like, if you just use marker or pen, it doesn't necessarily have the same feel, but because... Yeah paints will blend together just slightly and they will mm -hmm. you get these colors that until you've painted until you've seen it and done it, you're like oh yes. that that was accomplished because of that and then some of the yes can accomplish digital <clears throat> even though some of the digital programs are becoming amazing yeah. um yeah but i still feel like you lose a little of that texture sometimes though mm -hmm. um you not feel that way? my 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 I would say you would be hard to tell me what ones are digital and what ones are, are painted. You know, I use the same sort of technique for both. You know, I, when, I, when I use Photoshop, I can I use the same thing. Um, but some of these are digital and some of them are physically painted with acrylic. So it's it's part of the game, just throw one up, digital. <laughs> it's, it's, about, it's about technique, you know. It's yeah. about technique. It's about, you know, people say um, digital has no soul to it, but I don't believe that. I think that it's it starts off from a clean slate. It's the old, our digital a lot of times looks very smooth, you know, and clean, mm -hmm. where painting starts off from a very messy sort of, and you're trying to get it clean, trying to get things rendered smooth. So it's harder to get that smooth finish with paint but it's easier to get the smooth finish with digital, but it's harder to get the messy look with digital. And it's, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So they're slightly yeah. opposite of each other, but once you understand, 
the principles behind them, you can do smooth or messy with both of them. You know, and and in reality, it's a balance of both that you're looking for. The right, the right amount of the ingredients. You know, because you're you're making like a soup or something, or you're making some like a a pie or a dinner or something of some sort, yeah. and you need to put the right ingredients in that. And that, you know, that cover needs some some of the lines need to be blurry, some of them need to be sharp. Some you need the right amount of light and the right amount of dark. Yeah. You know, um, you look at, remember, you know the way people say about the spark of life, you know, the little dot that goes into the eye, the wee white dot. That only works because there's no other white dots in the, the thing. If your whole face was covered in white dots, then that spark wouldn't have the same effect. So mm -hmm. a, a good way to do that, you can play these things. Um, you know, if you want to take images that people have done, put them onto Photoshop and just take away little dots of light, you know, just paint over it. And on Photoshop, it's a good experiment, you know, to kind of say, look what happens when just one little dot of white disappears. Or the look when that highlight of white disappears off that armor or something. You know, you take away that one thing and that image becomes very boring. You know, and it, it's down to just that pinch of salt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's down to the wee pinch of something to add in, and that's what gold is again as well. You know, gold jewel jewelry or whatever. It's that little. It's the accent. Yeah, you know, I mean, I guess it's just there you go. The the lasso, mm -hmm. like that. Yep. When the way it stands out, yeah, yep. it's not noticeable at first, but it definitely. I mean, there's more to it than that, but like. That's a, and the guy, the guy, yeah, the guy that bought that off me, um, he said, you know, when he was asking me about, he wanted to buy it, he said, you know, um, is that Photoshop? You know, is the lasso Photoshop thing? I said, no, it's all painted. Um, but it, it's all about how you handle paint again, because paint will only, you know, something like that will only go over white, you know, so you have to have a pretty pure white background to put that paint over to get that mm. almost luminous like yellow color you know wow. and it did you like, tape that off while you painted everything else or did you do no that? you just be very careful just be careful I, so I now, is, the, is the zombified I one also are no. they two set oh that's the photoshop one that's the photoshop version yeah okay so the original the the non-zombified is the original painting yeah yeah, got it. The original one, um, because then I just put it into Photoshop and change things. Yeah, you know, yeah, makes sense. It's quicker, you know. It's quicker. Yep. Yeah. But um, but yes, they're they're tools. Um, that people say Photoshop. Okay, you could take you know like move an eye, which is true. You could move an eye, or you could move or whatever, or you could change everything into color. But the only difference is actually time. That's that it's only a time saver. Because you, if you can paint an eye in Photoshop, you can paint an eye in real life. The only problem is if you want to move it in real life, you're going to have to paint over it and then paint the thing. And if it's a light color, it's it's hard because you have to paint more white. And white doesn't go over stuff very well and blah, 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 blah. So it's all <laughs> by time. It's all by time rather than anything else. You know? um, but the disadvantage of Photoshop is you could probably go on forever and change and change and change and change and you have to have an idea of a direction for your uh, an idea of where you're trying to go with that piece of art you know what what color do you want it to be what way do you want it to look what is the atmosphere you know what texture do you want because you can work over all that stuff and work infinitely you know work forever and you know you keep changing and changing when do you stop you know yeah. well you know, and we've talked to uh, We've talked to artists before, and they they do a, a, a sort of a mismatch of both. They they yeah. sketch it real quick in it, or not quick, or however long it takes them. They sketch out their basic shapes, and they mm -hmm. send it to the editor and say, "Hey, here's my basic design." And the yes. editor comes back and say, "Okay, no, the the hand looks funny." And then once they got what they want, they print off mm -hmm. the big huge sheets, and yep. then they paint, and they illustrate, they color it in, and they mm -hmm. do whatever. Because I think we were talking to Drew Moss, and he's like. Yeah, I've gotten told to move an entire arm before because the arm didn't make sense where it was going to be. And like okay. he's like, my life was safe because of that versus have well, not literally life safe, but 
Oh yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. So I can see, I like hearing, yeah. I have huge respect for the fact that you can accomplish the same thing painting about vice versa back and forth. Cause I never thought about the fact how much of a pain it is to, as a Photoshop guy to make it look just right. Uh, yeah. Or make it look rough when it doesn't need to just to accomplish well, the goal. The other thing is this, again, um, well, Photoshop, right? Okay, you could you could get a face and stick it in there, paint over the face, turn it into Wonder Woman, or you could stick a yeah. face in and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Um, you can do that, but it's not going to help you whenever you go to paint something. And, you know, you you make a lot more money selling the originals of your paints yeah. than you do, you know, producing the artwork for the companies or whatever, right? So you're 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 doing yourself out of a you know a living you're in a sense ten thousand dollars to twelve thousand yeah. dollars <laughs> yeah quickly, you, depending on what what, what cover it yeah. is and for what book <laughs> yeah so you 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 know what I mean so it's it's a big disadvantage to just be working uh, digitally unless you well that's why a lot of digital people then kind of they're firing out cover after cover after cover to make that money up and I yeah. think then they do themselves a disservice in the sense because they produce too much work. People then become they go oh another another cover and they also yeah. you know maybe the quality sort of disappears a wee bit you know it is very hard to keep quality up at a at a level but you know I kind of just I torture myself and try you know keep everything as much as possible sometimes things slip and you just cannot you know help it um, but I try most of my stuff I try and keep at the same sort of standard you know. I don't know whether it's going to be exactly the same in like 30 years or whatever of them still doing covers. But um, <laughs> if I'm not living on a desert island, my own kind of uh, you know, spaceship, you know, a, a Mars <laughs> holiday home or something in 30 years, then I'm, I'll be disgusted, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. But I got one quick question before you before we say our official goodbye. You got to tell me first off. We're gonna find out if you have something coming out that's awesome. But would, we've been talking to different artists. Do you have a character that, man, I would love, not just to do a cover, but like have a story to go with the character? Like, have are you that type of a guy who I have something cooking, and this is what I would if I ever got the chance to do Moon Knight or <coughs> Red Sonia? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Sorry. Yeah, I actually, Pardon. yeah, I would like to. I would like to do a Red Sonia cover at some yes. point. Yes. Um, I would be taking the show on stuff. And I'm dialing, the, dialing up uh, dynamite now. Come on. Yeah, no, it's yeah. I mean, we've look. It was sitting. You know, the opportunities are sitting there, but I just haven't had time. I haven't had time. Um, there are certain characters that you know I want to get through. I want to do more Batman stuff. Um, you know, want to do more Wolverine, Joker. I love the Joker stuff. All that Joker uh, cover. I'm, uh, I'm to grab that image. It's the most. Yeah. one of the most disturbing Joker covers in a good way. <laughs> It is. is that the one with the, the body? The smile? You know, it's behind you, right behind your head. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah, that, that, that's that so one. freaking messed up. It is. <laughs> I, did, awesome. I don't know whether you saw the other Joker one where I did with the Batman family all beside. Oh, yes. Um, and they're all dead. But what happened was it's a funeral parlor. It's the, This one has a whole story to it. And I, I remember I was telling like the, the editor and stuff. I was like telling this whole story and it was like, yeah. You know that's that's a bit dark, you know, was, because like we had like Robin was actually there, and he's like a, a young boy, and he's dead. You know, he's a dead <laughs> young boy that has been had this like makeshift like Robin outfit has been painted on him, and he's like lying there like dead. You know, um, <laughs> it's really creepy, you know. But I'm uh, just amazed that got away with all this stuff. You know, <laughs> there you, go, uh, you got you got to keep doing it so you can keep making boys cry at conventions. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, look, you know, like I base all these, I look at a lot of mummified bodies, you know, and uh, as people wait, 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 do. Sorry, so you, you have to say that again. Yeah. You look at what? Lots of mummified bodies. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that is now important. If you, the, you can only edit that. Mummified bodies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not editing that. Not for all a million dollars. <laughs> well, I can see it in that keyboard. Yeah, cover. that's it. I do it so that you don't have to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So you're the Leonardo da Vinci. You're digging up dead bodies, and you're yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so I I kind of look at them to get all the inspiration for those like covers now, you know, to make sure those dead bodies and the, that the Joker has dug up actually look like real dead bodies, you know. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, I try and make them as creepy as possible, you know. But uh, yeah, I I've got away with so much. I'm I'm totally shocked. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally shocked. <laughs> I just thought so it was we, so we happy. should not be expecting like you to do um, Squirrel Girl or Moon Girl Dinosaur. Like you're going to stick to the sort of scarier Oops. side of the world. No, sir, I did that Gwen Stacy cover. You know what I mean? I did the yeah. Gwen Stacy. Every once in a while, you need like a palate cleanser. You know, you need to kind of. <laughs> you did so many. You've drawn so many dead bodies. You so, kind of need uh, to draw Gwen Stacy again. Palate cleanser. Palate cleanser. Yeah. Bodies. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? You really do. You need to kind of go, well, I'm going a bit dark here, you know, I need to go to something nice and light and fluffy and stuff, you know? It's like, <laughs> you know, so, part of the girls or Marvel or Actions so. IDW series. Go do some of those yeah. covers for them. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Marvel like, Action Avengers, and you go do some of those for, for teenagers years ago. De- <laughs> yeah, depending on my, my kind of mood, it depends. You know, I just kind of, I could sort of bounce to something else, you know? I just, Depend, but I couldn't stick to it because I keep coming back to the dark stuff. You know, it's yeah. the it. fact that DC came out with death metal and deceased because oh, yeah. it was like, yeah. here is my palette will for the next three years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I love that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love that. I love doing the kind of uh, the Batman, you know, with the armor and stuff. And oh, um, yeah. even I just made my own armor and stuff up. You know, I said, well, Can I do anything? And they said, Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I made this like medieval Batman sort of thing with swords oh, yeah. and war and armor and everything. And, yeah. That I remember so that. Fun. That was a gorgeous cover. Yeah, that, that was the hard thing. Digging through, once we figured out that you didn't do the turtles, yeah. that, <laughs> those turtles, it was the hard thing of going, there's so many great covers, but also it, it gets, okay. you do you do the same quality for your the DCB covers as you did for your exclusive. So like, okay, which yeah. one's the exclusive? Which one's yeah. the... The B cover, I mean, which I loved, like, yeah, yeah, I that's have, nice though. Yeah, was a lot I have, mm-hmm. have well, Spider Man, I, mean, I have those yeah. uh, Lethal Protector covers, they're gorgeous. You know, in the end, it's a cover, and you know, when it's out there, nobody cares, you know, what it's <laughs> what was what whether it was a store brand or you know, a retailer exclusive or or it was a main cover or whatever. You know, I just I'm gonna do the same quality for all of it. You know, and I'm not gonna half-ass mm. anything. I want to do a good job with everything because it is it's to do with it's art. You know, and you know I want to keep pressing pressing ahead and kind of and producing something or the best I can produce. You know, now if I if spend a month on a piece of art, it would be a lot better than think, but. With with about a week that I have to work on a cover, you know, some of that time I leave the cover to the side and then come back to it, and then I kind of correct certain things or add more details or whatever. It gives you a kind of fresh eye, to kind of you know, to judge what you've done. But with a week, you've got you can only produce a certain sort of level yeah. of of something. But you know, I'm kind of I'm sort of happy with the amount of time I spend on it. I don't I wouldn't more really want to spend more. To be honest, but, yeah. but you, might, you might overwork. You might overwork yeah, a piece yeah, if you did that. Yeah, yeah, and you'll freak out as well because you'll look at it and go, <laughs> "That face is wrong. The the like the jawbone's wrong. And the eyes are a wee bit weird, or this is wrong." And and it'll it'll torture the life out of you, you know, because you'll just look at it and say, "This is totally." Wrong. I need more mummy references. Re- yeah, I need to redraw this, you know, and you don't know what's wrong with it because you just can't tell, you know. It's it's. Yeah. it's it's bizarre. You're too art, close to art, it. Yeah, art's tough. You know, art is really tough. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it must be great drawn for a living, you know, all the time. But it is hard work. It's hard work, you know, when you're working all day, all night on stuff, you know. And, mm-hmm. um, but the reward is you produce art. It goes and lives on for a long time. Yeah. There, and, be, yeah. and people get a bit of something out of it, you know. It's, well, we appreciate you know, the time that you take to do the, yeah. the pieces. Thank I mean, you. they're they're beautiful. You. There's you know there's yeah. there's varying levels of art mastery in in the hobby, and yeah. you know seeing a pa- a fully painted, beautifully rendered thing like you do is is really awesome, and we really appreciate being able to buy those for five bucks every couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, there's I've got so many covers lined up, and I've finished a good 
whack of covers this year as well that haven't come like? yet. And <laughs> uh, Joker. Uh, oh yeah, because that's coming out in, in a month, I think. Um, a Wolverine cover. I'm just finished. Um, a Scream color. A cover for uh, Marvel. Um, mm. There's a team up cover or for uh, like a UK team thing that I'm doing as well for a Marvel one. Um, oh, the the Union. Yeah. For the yeah, I need, their, I, yeah, and another Alien cover. Um, mm. Oh, you're, you're not perfect uh, yeah. for the alien covers at all. I mean, not not at all. Oh, oh my no, god, no, that no. last one! <laughs> oh god! Thank you. <laughs> but uh, um, and what else? Yeah, I'm I'm working with Prime One Studio, um, producing a statue of one of the the DC figures. Oh, uh, I'd that's, say what it is, right? But uh, is that going to be your first statue, like of, yeah. of one of your pieces? Yeah, it's, good. Love, that's it's cool. gigantic as well. The statue. Please is do massive. an unboxing on your IG, awesome. your Instagram. Yeah. Please just do a little. I love watching the artist open the first time one of their toys because oh, you yeah, guys get so yeah, well, excited. Uh, yeah, I think I, it's pretty cool to see it. Yeah, it's pretty working with like the the sculptors and stuff and all the rest. Fantastic, you know. And uh, the the Prime One Studio is one of the top. You know, it's like hard to beat them. You know, the quality is yeah. just insane you know and i'm also working with um say two collectibles but i mm. can't say much about that <laughs> <laughs> so there's loads of stuff you know in the in the in the works you know and when conventions are back i'll be over to the us again so um yeah. probably with comics elite and, and things like that but just make sure you bring your James Brown cloak. When you yes, I, I have uh, research that I need a, yeah. I need a James Brown cloak. <laughs> this is this has been one of the deepest. This has been one of the deepest dives we've had into art technique, uh, and I yeah. really, yeah. really enjoyed this today. Thank you very much for getting into all that stuff for us. Very, very cool. Very fun. Thank you. Glad you liked it. <laughs> So once again, guys, this was 3CM talking with our Comics Collectors Chat. Uh, you can check out the article on comicbookinvest.com. You can check out the videos on my channel. You can check them out on Tales from the Flipside. Uh, you can, but make sure, guys, hit up comicbookinvest.com, CBSI, and just read about We're gonna have We're going to drop some more information about some of Ryan's stuff and put some links to his mm -hmm. IG and all that type of stuff. Uh, thanks, Ryan, once again. So. Yes, no problem at all. Thank you, Thank you so thanks much. Thanks for having me on. Really appreciate yeah. your time. It's good fun. It's good fun. Thanks.